One more aspect of the central limit theorem that we want to talk about uh, is its application actually to modeling uh, the binomial distribution. Okay, so over here we've seen that we've got just our regular normal distribution and then we know that the central limit theorem, that these sets of equations will work if the original distribution is normal or if the sample size is greater than or equal to 30. Okay, we're going to go back and talk about sometimes the binomial distribution or when we were talking about like number of successes over a certain number of trials, uh, that sometimes that those probability uh, or yeah, the probability mass functions when graphed out kind of looked like a normal distribution. There's actually a way that we can take a look at this and we can actually model it as essentially a normal distribution um, with the central limit theorem. Now what has to be true is we have to actually see a, an appropriate number of successes and an appropriate number of failures uh, in our scenario. Okay, so what we need to see is when we do this is our sample is going to be of size n and like the probability of success, you know, we'll have something like, oh, I don't know, like 0.5 or 0.6. Anyhow, that's always going to be our pi. If that is greater than or equal to 15, and if n times the probability of failure, which is pi complement, is greater than or equal to 15, then we can invoke the central limit theorem. And where we can now use this to model our binomial distribution with a normal distribution using the central limit theorem. So you're like, why 15? Well, it's the same reason as basically 30. We're trying to get these guys to sum up uh, to 30. Uh, this is actually a kind of a conservative number. A lot of textbooks you'll see, um, sometimes they have 10 successes and failures. Sometimes it's even all the way down to five. And having 15, uh, I like this one because when we add them together, we're still trying to target this greater than or equal to 30. Okay, so if we can get a scenario, a binomial scenario, where this is true, then what we can do is we can model, uh, we, can, we can tweak our central limit theorem. But instead of talking about, uh, about means, we're gonna talk about true proportions and sample proportions. And this really allows us to start talking uh, about like um, some categorical data, right, or kind of, this discrete data, but we can talk about like, uh, we can start talking about like the number of cars in the car lot that are yellow. We can start talking about some categorical data using our normal distribution. Okay, so we need to adjust this equation then to fit our, when we are talking about like the true proportion of shots made, the true proportion of um, cars in, or trucks in the parking lot out of all the types of vehicles there, we've still got to be able to convert that equation. So let's take a moment and do it. It's still a Z equation, but it's now going to be equal to P, which is our sample proportion, minus pi, our true proportion, and we are going to divide it by sigma p. Okay, so really the only things that we changed were kind of x bar, now we're talking about p is going to be the sample proportion, pi is the true proportion, just like this is the true mean, and we have a standard deviation. And our standard deviation is a little different now, instead of being sigma x bar, it's sigma p, and sigma p we can recalculate out by this. It is the square root of pi times pi complement divided by our sample size. 
And just as a review, I've put this pi complement up a couple times. Pi complement is equal to 1 minus pi. Or if pi is like our, our um, oh, proportion that we're interested in, pi complement then is like the, the rest of the group that we're not interested in. Uh, anyhow, like this is super handy, once again, because now we can start talking about our categorical data, like you know the proportion of some categorical data. That is what our um, approximation of the binomial distribution with our central limit theorem lets us do.